welcome to the Neoprene Playmat. I'm your host, Matt Piak, and today uh, is spend your spend my money Mondays, not spend your money. Um, and essentially, what this segment is is a look at how to get rid of my hundred dollars each month I have uh, related to board gaming expenses. So, um, last month just ended. We had a little bit extra cash, so we're rolling eight twenty nine from September to October, which gives us a total of a hundred and eight dollars and twenty nine cents for the month of October. Now, that's a little deceiving because I have my money wrapped up already. Uh, sometimes that happens. You're looking at things in the future and you're like, I got to get that. I got to have that. So this is I'm going to designate this part of my budget to that. So um, hopefully I'll be able to spend what I'm looking to spend this month. Let's hop into it. All right. So the game that I've been looking at quite a bit, you've heard about it on the channel, is this Cosmic Frog game by Jim Felly. Um, it just, the, the theme looks great and I've got them essentially they're It's on a notification service with the uh, power to the meeple. So they're going to be emailing me as soon as they get it in. I have alma mater already waiting there. They're one of the retail companies. Um, power to the meeple is a, a retail company that does free shipping once you hit a hundred dollars. And so, um, I have I have them holding alma mater. I've already paid for that. That came out of last month's budget. Cosmic Frog is supposed to come in at fifty two ninety nine, and so they're going to notify me when it gets in, which it's supposed to come in this month. So let's hope that's the case. If not, I might end up rolling a lot of money into November. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. But um, essentially, in in this game, um, you are giant, like two three mile tall frogs. There's great frog minis. They're all cosmic and crazy. I mean, look at all the psychedelic frog action over here on these cards. It looks fantastic. And then to to add to it, they it comes with a neoprene play mat uh, for the board that you play on. So, I um, mean, they provide that. That's not like a deluxe component or anything. It just comes in the box. So, really excited about all that. Being that it's going to set me back fifty two ninety nine, I'm going to be left with. $55.30 for the rest of the month. On top of that, I have a very, very anticipated Kickstarter. Um, as you can tell with my admiration for Cosmic Frog, I, I do have um, I do have a taste for, for just strange themes. I love a, a game that does something different, that challenges kind of the narrative of what a game theme should be about. And so Townsfolk Tussle is coming out October 30th to Kickstarter, and I am so excited. It's animated like a 30s cartoon. Think like old Mickey Mouse or if you've played Cuphead. Um, it's like that, but it's a little more gruesome. You can see it's got blood dripping down here on the box art, um, and you see the animated characters here, and um, this is a boss battler. I don't have any boss battlers in my entire collection, and so... Um, that's, that really intrigued me. Um, some people said it's like a, it's like one component of Kingdom Death Monster, which Kingdom Death Monster, just based on the cost, is something I'm never going to get into. And so I, I thought this aspect of it sounded really fun, the, the boss battling. And so in Townsfolk Tussle, you are cooperatively fighting against, um, I believe four bosses throughout the course of the game. And... Here's kind of the, the board. You can see it's bright colored. We got like a rooster figure here. You'll see that there's standees. Those are only in the prototype they made. They're actually coming out with miniatures for the game. Um, and then the artwork's all great. It's this like 30s artwork. You can see too, it's kind of gory. There's like blood and stuff on it. Um, so it definitely looks like a, a unique and different theme. I'm really excited about this one. And so I, I anticipate backing it. Being that it, it goes up on Kickstarter on October 20th, it's one of those that is probably going to end up going into November. And so I can think, do I want to spend part of my October budget on it and part of my November budget or just my November budget? All those sorts of things uh, come into it. And what else is out, right? Sometimes there's games I really want, like Into Deep is a great example. That game I think looks fantastic. I want it really badly. <laughs> I just, I don't have the money for it. I chose Cosmic Frog over Into Deep. Um, many of you are probably saying I'm crazy for doing that, and you might be right, but 
um, it just to me it, it seemed more compelling and hopefully I'll be able to get into deep on the uh, secondary market when it comes after it uh, releases but um, with all that said let's hop to what could potentially be taking my attention away from townsfolk tussle so windward this one is uh windward was already released this is a collector's box with an expansion in it it's coming out by el dorado games um and it yeah it has this huge massive box you can see this leviathan and this airship the theme looks pretty cool it's kind of a steampunky universe you are in these giant ships that look like they belong in the sea but they fly in the air and the wind i guess in the game changes which allows you to um, kind of manipulate the way you move um, additionally you are kind of building an engine by how you set up your workers on your play mats and in the game there will be leviathans which are these like red minis that are up here um, that pop up and you'll be able to destroy those as well as um, there is some piracy involved as well you can come and uh, loot somebody else's uh, wind ship um, and so it, it just looks it looks pretty intriguing this is their the original kickstarter launch i believe it was delivered one one or two months ago um, and there were some pretty hefty complaints about the component quality which is kind of crazy for eldorado games because everything they've published everybody has been really high on the component quality of what they release and the publisher came out and said hey we went with a different manufacturer this time, not because we didn't like the quality of the manufacturer we were using, but we thought that for this specific game and the components, you can see these are kind of different components in that there's like a cloud that, with a clear stand that holds up this miniature uh, ship. Um, they thought that this other manufacturer would be better. And once production kind of finished, they realized that um, the components weren't up to the quality that they are known for and what they expect. And so um, at that point, there was really no way to run it back or refund everybody their money. I mean, they're just slightly less great components than what, what people were anticipating. But they have said that they are going back to um, the manufacturers they've used for their other games like El Dorado um, they're also responsible for the Age of Atlantis, which is a current Kickstarter project going on. Um, and so uh, definitely looks interesting. The cost on this one looks like it's going to be a little too high for me this month. I don't have the original one, so this upgrade kit of $45, which gives you just like the expansion and the collector's box, um, that won't work for me. So I'd have to go in on the collector's edition, which is $100. And as you know, my, my budget doesn't uh, work with that for now, but if this looks like a game that would interest you, check it out. Um, it's got a few days running. I'm recording on, let's see, it's Sunday. Um, I know it's Spend My Money Monday, but I, I'm recording a day early. And uh, if we if we look here, it's 21 days, so 20 days from the time you're watching this if you're watching it on release. So check it out if you're interested. Another big one that's been making a lot of buzz, everybody probably knows about this, but I just feel like I had to say some things. So um, this is Dinosaur World and Dinosaur Island Roar and Write. I do think it's very interesting that Pandasaurus Games has decided to release them together as a package. I mean, obviously everything's kind of connected and going back to Dinosaur Island, um, which really kind of started this dinosaur craze, I feel, in the in the board gaming space uh, we've seen since then we've seen tiny epic dinos we've seen draftosaurus we've seen dinogenics now we're seeing dinosaur island roar and right and dinosaur world and it seems like a lot of these big titles that are coming out were inspired by that original um, dinosaur island um, and so these two games definitely look interesting i am a little surprised they're in the same campaign but that's also cool if you want to get multiple games and get it cheaper so um, let's first look at uh, Dinosaur World here. So it continues with the crazy color scheme um, from Dinosaur Island. It's a little bit more orangey and purpley. I think it's a little more subdued. Um, there's not like the bright greens and blues and things, but I still really enjoy this aesthetic, and I enjoyed the aesthetic of 
Dinosaur Island, although I've never played anything from the series. Um, so I, I like the way that's looking. It's got these giant hexes, and I saw these on a table. They're massive. They are huge. They're not like they're not like Catan hexes. They're bigger. They're much bigger. I'm surprised they don't have the dimensions of these things um, written out anywhere. But um, on top of that, they're offering every single Kickstarter version is going to have these screen printed meeple dinosaurs. Um, now that's a really big deal to anybody that was a backer and enjoyed um, Dinosaur Island because a lot of them ended up going to Meeple Source to get screen printed meeples over the like plastic ones that were provided or acrylic. Maybe they were acrylic. Um, and so right out the gate, they're starting really well on the component level with those offering those screen printed minis. And we've got the, uh, we got these Jeeps too. I think they're offering like two or three different sculpts because of the stretch goals and things too on those. So, um, those should be pretty cool. Um, and then they have these translucent dice, which I'm not a fan of these at all. I understand they are kind of the homage to the mosquito being stuck in the, uh, in the sap or whatever, the tree so that they could get the blood to clone all the dinosaurs. And so from a thematic perspective, totally understand that they do kind of look cool too, but problem is with these translucent dice you can see through them and when you're trying to read dice face quickly I feel like it just bogs the game down it's one more thing your brain has to focus on um I mean I could take it or leave it but uh I think for the most part it's a it's a pass on on my part um otherwise um they're showing you here everything inside the box there are dual uh dual layer player boards i love that these are becoming just more commonplace in the board gaming space they are great because you're you know if you shake the table or sneeze or whatever your pieces aren't going to move um nobody's ever going to bump it and say oh where does that block belong it's very easy to track and everything kind of stays held together so that's great job there all these giant hexes they're huge i'm telling you they're huge you get this exclusive uh, Humvee, if you're a Kickstarter uh, backer, which is pretty cool. Um, and then here are all the different screen printed dinosaurs that you're going to be getting and the, the count on those. You're going to be getting meeples, um, and these were unlocked too, so they're like special meeples because they're wearing like hats and stuff. So it looks pretty cool. This first player marker is like just a giant chunky piece of plastic, which is pretty cool probably not great for the environment but it'll probably look pretty awesome on your table um back to these translucent dice and then here's what's crazy they're including metal coins in all of the pledges um so if you get dino world you're gonna get metal coins you don't have to pay anything extra it's just part of the kickstarter that's a huge win i don't think i've ever seen this in a kickstarter before and I think it's amazing that they're able to offer that level of quality um, off the first run. I imagine they are banking on selling a lot of copies of this retail as well after the Kickstarter like they did with Dinosaur Island. So um, I think that's probably why they believe they can definitely afford to do this in the Kickstarter for the price they're they're selling this at. And then you get this cool embroidered bag to put all the coins in. And who doesn't want that? <laughs> um and then there's an expansion you can add on, get more crazy different dinosaurs, all screen printed as well. Um, and then there's a little how to play thing here. I've already gone on so much about the components. I won't um, go into a deep dive on all the mechanics and whatnot, because we also have to cover Dinosaur Island here. Uh, the Roar and Write, which I'll be honest with you, if you look over at these prices, the Roar and Write by itself is 30 bucks. And at first I was like, that's a lot of money for a roll and write, especially when you factor in shipping and everything. But this looks like a pretty uh, intricate uh, roll and write. We have this player board here. We have all these cards that flip out. Um, I imagine they indicate to do different things on this two sheets. You have two sheets for your roll and write. So there's a ton going on. It looks pretty complex for a roll and write. I'm not saying it's a weighty game, but... Um, definitely more than your traditional roll and write. And then we also got those amber translucent dice. Once again, I'm not a huge fan of those, but if that's your thing, uh, you've definitely got a place to get them here. 
and then let's see here yeah so this is pretty much it oh yes yes i did want to talk about these they also have two for the kickstarter exclusive they're erasosauruses which are fan fantastic branding here these are uh, dinosaur erasers for when you're making a mark with your pencil if you put it in the wrong spot you can erase it and i mean look at that they're great there's like a raptor and triceratops and you get this cool bag as well so um definitely looks interesting the pledge levels are ridiculously reasonable once you get beyond this one i think all things considered i do think the the roll and write is maybe just a little expensive the roar and write if that's the the only thing you go with but Dinosaur World is 70 bucks, which with f over 50 metal coins and all that other stuff that's in the box, all those screen printed meeples and stuff, that's that's a really good deal. And then when you put the two together, it's $95. I, I don't think that's a bad deal at all. I, I think that's going to, and apparently 4,000 people agree with me. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a, really great price and i'm really impressed that they're able to get the price that low if i'm being completely honest for everything that that you get in this but um with my money being locked up the way it is this is what i'm passing on and it might be regrettably so but i know for a fact it'll be on the retail market and i might not get the most deluxe components out of it but i will get um get the game and that's that's what's most important so i'll be looking back into it once it hits retail for sure all right, now to look at Apogee. This one I came across maybe two days ago. I hadn't heard anything about it. Um, I was going deep into Kickstarter recommended things and saw it, and I was like, oh, I really like kind of this minimalist artwork on the cover. This chrome box looks really cool. Let me take a look. And this thing looks pretty sweet. It's doing pretty well for itself for being a small publisher. Um, it is really important to point out that there is going to be a difference between what a small publisher and a publisher like Pandasaurus uh, can do. Um, and so when we get to the deluxe edition, you'll definitely see how that differs from something like Dinosaur World. But um, well past the funding goal here, nine days to go. This is one I'm actually heavily considering. Um, it, th in this game, you are um, in a space race. You're trying to build rockets um, to succeed on different missions before the other players. Um, and so essentially you are managing different cards, whether it be money, um, money cards or engineer cards, which you will be playing to your uh, player board to do different things. Different engineers are going to be better at different things, like they'll have a specialty or the construction or research and development. Um, or you'll be managing blueprint cards, which you're going to end up playing um, to these boards here to assemble your rocket. Um, once you think you are able to launch to succeed at the mission, you will be rolling dice, um, hoping to be able to successfully launch your rocket. The more blueprints and the more different attachments and things you have on your ship, the easier it's going to be um, to succeed at the mission. Um, there are ways to mitigate the die rolls. Um, I will admit, when I first heard that you're rolling a dice to, or die to see if you if you win or if you get if you succeed at the mission, I was a little set aback. I was like, "What? It's coming down to a die roll." Um, and then I heard there's a lot of different mitigation. The way you build your ship affects the way the numbers you need to get on the dice and things of that nature. Um, but all of that said, when you're thinking about launching a rocket, there's so many different things that can go wrong. And a lot of times it does almost seem like the flip of a coin. So um, if you if you aren't successful in Apogee though, it is interesting. You do not your ship does not blow up. You get to continue to work on it. So maybe you just have a minor error if you don't get the die roll. Because um, if this wasn't a uh, if this wasn't a board game, your ship would probably explode, which um, obviously would not be good, and you'd have to start from ground zero. But for the sake of a game, a little theme breaking is okay if it makes sense to um, kind of. <laughs> make that space race a little bit more uh enjoyable for everybody participating so um 
this game looks i don't know just i love the artwork i like what they're doing oh here's what gets me so typically i'm a big fan of saying if you're going kickstarter go deluxe you got to get the deluxe components that's what makes it worth it because kickstarters are generally more expensive than when you buy the game in retail um that said the deluxe editions generally aren't available in retail so always go deluxe here's one where one my finances would not probably permit me to go (laughs) deluxe this month given that i'm going with cosmic frog already but on top of that the deluxe edition to me doesn't seem much better and this is a this is a small publisher and so I don't know if I'm actually going to see Apogee in the retail market. Um, There's going to be a secondhand market. They've sold enough product that I might be able to pick it up that way. But um, that said, I'm kind of okay going with just the the basic game. Let's look at the deluxe content here. There's you get three space patches, which I mean they're cool. They have the logo and stuff, but I don't really put patches on anything. Um, I guess if you're a real fanboy, this would be like perfect for you. But um, for me, those patches would probably just sit in the box or somewhere in my extra board game stuff. You get a dice bag, which is cool. I like dice bags. It's nice to have those instead of your dice and zip blocks. But um, I mean, I probably won't upgrade just for a dice bag. So let's look at what else we got. We got Galaxy Dice. So I showed you earlier, they have those translucent blue dice. Um, but these actually look like they're they're purple. They have like a galaxy print on them. And then they have these yellow numbers, which stand out really nice and bright. They look cool. But honestly, I'm pretty cool with the translucent blue ones. Um, I know earlier I was talking about how I didn't like the translucent dice from Dinosaur World. But I felt like with all the symbology on those, it was really difficult to see kind of what you actually rolled. Whereas with a numerical die, I don't think the, the problem is quite the same. So I'd be totally okay having a blue translucent dice instead of these. Um, these don't, to me, I mean, I'm sure they're more to manufacture and they probably do look nicer. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not a huge upgrade. The one thing I'm sad about missing out on though, if I go with the retail edition, is this chrome packaged box. So this is meant to look like the food that astronaut, it's uh, the astronaut foods packaged in so it's the packaging um from those meals and i just i think that's awesome i think every time i look at my shelf i would see this game and be like yeah that does look pretty cool it's a chrome box um and unfortunately this is not something you can add on you can add on patches you can add on the dice bag you can add on these galaxy dice but they do not have they don't provide the ability to to offer that all that said this is a pretty cool looking box to begin with. So I don't know if it needs to be Chrome. If it, if the game's good, I think this is more than justice enough. This box is designed better than a lot of boxes I see. I like the minimalist style. Um, so that looks great. Additionally, this is another game that's like a realistic space game. There's not a ton of these. Um, Terraforming Mars is probably the one that comes to mind that a lot of people think of. It's kind of realistic, but the same time the amount of things you're doing to mars land i I just don't don't see it being super realistic it's but it's not like crazy sci-fi with all the aliens and things um that said i did recently back a game called intrepid which is trying to stay very accurate to um the space station and and all of that which seems really cool and i like the idea of kind of a realistic space game i'm not against sci-fi but just more of these need to exist. That's all I'm saying. Um, so let me know what you think. Is this something I should back? It's For for me, I, I live in the U.S., so it'd be $43 to back. The shipping on these is really reasonable. It's going to end up coming in at uh, $7 U.S., so looking at $50. Bucks. Um, that'd probably be the rest of my budget for um, October, and I could bank my money for um, Townsfolk Tussle, for for, uh november look to use that to buy that game rather than using any of my october funding um but is apogee worth it what are your thoughts let me know in the comments below all right let's move forward here all right so i had to do a shout out to fantastic factories i i like this game a lot um i've played it quite a bit there it's pretty 
pretty interesting in that you're rolling dice all at the same time. I like that you're not, especially in an engine builder, you're not having to wait to watch everybody trigger their engine and watch everything go off. Everybody gets to work at the exact same time. Um, and so that's really interesting. And now they're coming out with two expansions for it. So if we look here, there's um, the manufactions, which is it gives everybody a faction that they work for. So special abilities and things um, for the individual rather than um, everybody kind of being the generic same thing. And then this other expansion, let me see. I'm trying to remember the name of it here. Subterfuge. That's it. Um, and this has just a bunch of bunch of new cards and some new mechanics. But what's really cool is Wormwood is actually going to be getting a card that is in Subterfuge. There's like a um, there's like a lumber mill or a woodworking mill, something along those lines that you're going to be able to build. And the Wormwood logo is going to be on it. So uh, that came across in the updates from the Wormwood table and. So I figured I'd share it here. If you haven't checked out Fantastic Factories and looking and are looking for a light engine builder, I personally like this one better than Gizmos. Um, that's usually the light engine builder I hear people recommend. Um, but I would definitely check out Fantastic Factories if you haven't. This campaign is going to be going on for a while. Um, I know it's going to go to retail afterward. Um, it's got 23 days to go, so um, it'll be on here for a while. They're killing their goal. It will go to retail. There are Kickstarter exclusives you'll miss out on. Um, but I'm looking to get it on, on that market rather than going in here. Um, that said, take a look. All right. Here's another thing I came across just the other night. And I think this looks super cool. So this is their second campaign um, of enamel pins. So I don't do patches, like I was saying with Apogee, but... Every once in a while I get one of these enamel pins. They're very, they just, they look really clean and they're chunky, nice metal. You, you guys know I like chunky things. So um, I I would put these on my game bag in, a, in an instant. So um, essentially what they are is just a pin that you can put on and they have different game is gamer-isms, as they're calling it, um, on them. So like this one is I heart my FLGS, which is Friendly Local Game Store. Um, to sleeve or not to sleeve. I, I like that one a lot. Um, I often think about that. <laughs> Usually when I'm sleeving a game. Um, less AP, more VP. Um, so less analysis paralysis, which is, you know, somebody taking forever on their turn and uh, more victory points. And then, yes, I do indeed need, or I do need all these board games and this person's like laying out in front of the shelf they got games stacked up to the left and right of them it's it they just look hilarious um they have funded these are going to go to print um i was gonna jump in on them and then i remembered enamel pins are more expensive than you'd think they are um but one pin and a freebie sticker is 11 bucks and then you got a factor in shipping as well um and then you can get Let's see here, two pins and a and a sticker uh, for twenty two bucks. So if that's something you're interested in, um, I definitely think they look really nice. They're they're pretty cool. Um, who knows? You might need one for your game bag, right? Uh, so I thought I'd bring this campaign up. Let's see who's this is uh, a production by. Oh, it's going to be over here, isn't it? Yeah. So this is uh, Polia Design. So if you're interested, check it out. 24 days to go so it's definitely got some time uh check these pins out all right and for the last portion of this segment untamed spirit strike i keep bringing this up i've talked about how i don't like expansions but i've also talked about how much i like this game i've talked about how power creep often happens in games like this but i'm still kind of being drawn in i'm looking there's, you know, there's four new factions that are going to be added. I have the base game. I've enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, this one adds apes, snakes, uh, elk or deer. And then the Kickstarters get, um, get squirrels, which is really cool because who doesn't want a squirrel? Um, that said, I'd be going in at the $20 US pledge with $10 shipping. So we're talking 30 bucks. That would bring my budget down to the for the month 
if we're still waiting on that cosmic frog down to 25 bucks left so um, this would definitely take a lot of things off the market if i decided to back it if you're watching this now it's probably only got a day left on it so let me know in the comments below if you guys can make a compelling argument that I need to get this, I need to upgrade my game, I need to get the, the new box, the new classes, and all of the, the stretch goals and whatnot, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking. Um, or if you don't think I should get this, if you think I need to save my money, please convince me. Convince me to save my money. I like saving my money when I can. Um, I'm, I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know. Um, otherwise... That's that's all we got for today. That's Spend My Money Monday. Help me spend my money. Tell me what I need to buy, what I need to pass on, where I'm wrong, where I'm right. Um, and other than that, have a great week.